those that are also connected online that will be able to receive this ministry of the world. Thank you, eternal Father. I promise to return all the glory to you. Amen. In Jesus' precious name, we pray. Amen. All right, please let's take our seats. God bless you. Good evening, everybody. Good evening. Bless you. So good to see your faces again. Amen. Amen. All right, tonight I want to try to articulate a few things. But I'd just like to remind everyone that the date is counting. It's 13th of December today. And as we journey through the year, I want you to remember that God has been good. God is good. God has been good. And God will always be good. It's my prayer that God's goodness, you will have a testimony personally in Jesus' name. Amen. You know, when you experience something personally, nobody can confuse you otherwise. Yes, I pray that you will understand when they say, Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man that puts his trust in him. That your trust in God will not be put to um, shame in the name of Jesus Amen. Christ. Alright. Let me start by asking, how many of us, how's your day? How do you do? How the day was okay. Amen. Good to see your face. I know some people are having struggles today. Traffic is different today. Different things happening. But let's not be bothered. Is that okay? Yes, let's just stay focused. Let's, let's dwell with what is material. You know, not everything is material. Yes. Not everything is important. Some things are important. What is important is that you are here yes, and that we are going to enjoy the best of God in Jesus' name. Amen. Let me start tonight with some homologists. And I promise I will not just do homologists. I will also still share what the Lord has placed in my heart. The first homologist I want to share is about something I think is very important. I may teach on it later. The urge and the impression has been coming to my heart more often, but I'm sure you, when you hear it, you will understand what I'm talking about. Let me start with this statement. One of the greatest rewards that you can receive from God is Him giving you a name, a name among the greats. Whenever God wants to bless people, He always tampers with their name. Either by elevating it, or by correcting it, or by conferring a name on someone. Names are very important to God. Names are very important to God. And the revelation of the name of God you have would, could literally describe the kind of encounter of God you will have. When you know God as a healer, you will be a testimony of healing. There are names that we call God that are product or is a product of people's encounter with God. And in other words, the time they said someone, like someone said that God's name is El Jehovah El Ephesi. And we're joking those days that that means the person has ex experienced God's Ephesi style. That's nonsense, okay? <laughs> All right. But the point I'm making is that the direction or the dimension of God you experience can help you name God in a certain way. Most of those names we call God are the names people gave God when they encountered God in certain ways. Oh, yeah. I'm trying to say a few things tonight in this discussion. Now, number one, if you truly have an encounter with God on a definite name or a definite experience, you will find yourself either giving God a name, a name that is personal to you and him. And if God encounters or brings his encounter to you as the, way, as the case may be, you will find him introducing himself to you in a certain way. If you've not had any of these two, you may still be scratching the surface of your experience with God. But you need to know God for yourself by a name. Usually, He takes the name of the need you have. If you need God to be a healer, those that call Him healer is because they experience healing. Those that experience Him as a God of deliverance is because they experience deliverance. It's possible that there is an experience you have that has not been documented in your knowledge. Maybe it's even inside the Bible, but you have just not known it. Maybe there is a personal experience that you are going through. 
For example, I call him a faithful God. It's not because he's inside the Bible. Or should I say, it's not only because he's inside the Bible. Because I've experienced God's faithfulness. Oh. When you experience God's forgiveness, you will call him a forgiver. Yes, you will say, Jehovah, forgiveness. When you are alone, alone in the confusion of life, and God shows up, you will know that he is a God of ghosts, the one that keeps company of his own. I want you to please be interested in discovering a personal name for God. From your pain can come a gain. From your test can come a testimony. Don't let your personal pain go without you discovering God's name. There is a name that will answer to that pain. Are you going through stuff? I don't know. I may not know. But I can tell you one thing tonight. That God wants to give you a name. That he calls himself to you. Can I hear your amen on that? <laughs> not only does God want to give a name of himself. He wants to confer a name of greatness on you. As I said, I'm saying a few things along this line. That God will introduce himself. When Moses was to go back to Egypt, he said, by what name should I say I was sent? By what name? I can't just go out. He said, tell them a year, a year, a year. It means I am that I am. And I am that I am is not what does that mean? It means I will be to you whatever you want me to be to you. No. God is flexible like that. And he can meet you at the... So sometimes... People don't know how to invoke that side of God that is personal, is true to them. There is a name God wants you to call him. He will answer. There is a name. The name you gave him. Hallelujah. Amen. You see, when you enter trouble, eh, you know that God can deliver from trouble when you call him by that name. So some of us don't understand the power in that mystery. That you are in trouble and you say, Father, I've done it again. Help me. <laughs> then you will begin to call him the God that delivers from trouble. We don't have a name like that in Hebrew. That is God that delivers from trouble. We just call him Sifkenu, uh, righteousness. Um, uh, Shama. There is a way you will go through an experience that is you that will say, Father. Show me this, this baby. Show me your glory in this matter. And I'm starting with that to say also that it is powerful that when God wants to really reward his own people for their faithfulness, for their work with him, one of the things he does is to give them a name among the great. Let's look at a few scriptures just quickly to establish this um, thought because I have one or, or two more to before I go ahead. In the book of um, Philippians, Popular scripture. Remember that name? That scripture. That he has given him a name far above every other name that are the name of Jesus. Every chapter 2. Am I correct? Yes. Let's start from verse 8. Philippians chapter 2 from verse 8. Who is going to read? Oh, okay. Good. Let's, let's read it. Let's go. Together, I want to go. And being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. Okay. Wherefore God had highly exalted him. I want to see that God exalts people. Please listen to what I'm sharing with you tonight. Are you here tonight? Yes. I pray that you, you will get more than I'm even saying in yeah. Jesus' name. So he says, God has highly exalted him. So God has exaltation as a reward. There is such a thing called God exalting you. Don't think what you know of God is all you need to know. There are things you will do to God or for God that will make God exalt you. The Bible was saying in Psalm 45 verse 7, it says, because you love righteousness and hate wickedness, Therefore, the Lord thy God has highly exalted you above thy fellows with the oil of gladness. Do you remember that scripture? Psalm 45, that thou lovest righteousness and hate wickedness. Therefore, God thy God has anointed thee with the oil of gladness above 
there is still an above. Are you listening to what I'm saying? God can exalt you above. There is still another level from where you are. And I think in my spirit that anyone who is sincere should aspire for that next level. That quest for more makes you diligent to do the things you can do. So because we don't aspire for greatness. We are not interested. And I'm, I'm curious. How can you be a human being and not be aspiring for greatness? There should be an aspiration constantly. So the Bible says, go back to that uh, Philippians, please. It says, God can exalt a man above his fellows. May you be exalted above your fellows. Say who they remember. So tonight, one of the things I want to underline there is I want to heighten your curiosity and quest for greatness. Exalting him and giving him a name. That name was there before Jesus Christ got it. Jesus was Jesus. This name there is not Jesus. It's the authority that followed the name. God can give you a name. In fact, one of the ways God rewards us is to give us a name. Hallelujah. When God wants to say well done, one of the things he does, if he's truly very happy, is that you know that in cultural setting, when you do something in the village, they say, Banu Buoba, or the or to bar something is to confirm that this guy has done significant. If some of you don't aspire for it, some of you here, you don't plan to go to your village to become anything. It's not an aspiration. There's nothing wrong with that. But some people know that they want to have a name in their community. So are you inspired to them? There is interesting to them. Yes. Some people, their name is still their name, but they want to have a name in this country. I don't know what I'm saying. Are you interested in getting a name? Yes. A name of the great. Look at it. He says he gave him a name which is giving him a name which is above everybody. So there are names. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yes, sir. There are names which is above every other name. There's a name you're carrying now. If God puts something on it, it will be different. There are names in this country. When you mention them, people respond. There are names that you mention, people close their door. Hey, yes. There's a man, I like to speak of him because I respect him so much. One of such people. His name is Christopher Colady. He's still alive. Amazing man. 90 something, if I'm not mistaken. But that name is a good name. Uh, the name is Christopher Colady, maybe at his childhood. The way God puts grace on your name, ah. when they mention your name, it will open doors. Ah. Don't think you are being proud. God rewards people by exalting them with a name. In your community, for them to mention your name and not be responsible, it's not good. You should desire to have a good name. Is it not written? A good name is better than riches. Am I correct? A good name is better. Can you imagine that? That money. A good name. Some of you are like, no. A good name is better than riches. Because there are some things money cannot do that name will do. That's the truth. And I want you to be interested in not just having a good name, but a great name. You see, this expectation or desire that I'm trying to sell to you, if you buy into it, it will redefine the kind of things you pay attention to. Let me show you one more before I go ahead. Look at the story of David in Second Samuel chapter 7. The story I'm sure you remember. Let's start from, from verse 8. <clears throat> David sat in his palace and said, How can I sit down like this? And then the palace of God, the Ark of Covenant is in the field unattended to. So go back to verse 8, please. Okay, let's go. Let's, let's start from here. And you get to pass that night that the word of the Lord came unto me and saying, So if you read from verse 1 to 3, David was saying that, let's start from book, but two managers quickly read verse 1 to 3, eh? so that it's not far. Let's go. And it came to pass when the beast was in his mouth, and 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 the be
Did you see that? Just an answer. You know, I'm sitting here and the act of God is dwelling inside curtains outside. Say that was wood. The wood said that means wood. It means wood. kind of wood. He said, I'm dwelling in this kind of place. And look at God's act of heaven. Look at where he's staying. He's like, he said, Look at me. I'm living inside this mansion. I see where the church is. When you think godly thoughts, yeah. that was all he did, though. He has not done it. He just said, ah, Look at me now. I'm sitting inside here. But look at where pastor is sitting. Look at me now. See what I'm driving. But see what my pastor is driving. Look at me now. I'm doing this now. I'm, I'm comfortable. But look at my pastor's shoe. I'm just trying to say, My shoe is good. I'm just trying to say to you that, you know, the kind of thoughts, nobody. Nobody will beat him if you do not do anything. God not say, look at me, my son. I'm outside. You, you are chilele. You are kulele. No. God did not do that to him. He thought, the God he thought cross your mind. <laughs> the God he thought cross your mind is important to God. Let's read on. So, verse 3. Want to go? And Nathan said to the king, Go, do all that is in my heart. For the Lord is with you. You know, we're talking about that. The Lord is with you on Sunday. Let's go on last four now. And it came to pass that night that the word of the Lord came unto me and said, And tell my servants, Thus here the Lord shall thou build me an house for me to He gave me say, What's the build house? He just said, Look at me, I'm dwelling in this comfort. Just the thoughts. God was too impressed, He couldn't wait. Eh? You want to build me a house? You see, don't add to the Bible. You want to build me a house? Are you serious? Look at it now. It's a question. He's asking. He said, go and tell my servant David. So that one too went. Will you build God a house? Shall thou build me a house for me to dwell in? Read on. Read on. Where as, let's go on. Where as I have not dwelt in any house. Since the time that I brought up the children of Israel out of Egypt, even to this day, not in a tent. And they, it's like saying nobody noticed, but I've been walking you know, Nobody has bought me a car since so. I want to do this thing is called antipo, antipo for anthropomorphism. Yes. It means when God behaves like a human being. Uh, in theology, it's called anthropom- anthropomorphism. When God starts to think like a human being, he is God. But he, he, he has a way of making himself feel human. Like, at me to you, 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 you remember me. Do you get what I'm saying? It's called anthropomorphism. So look at what it says. Let's go. Did we read that complete? Okay, let's go. Verse 7, please look at, look at, let's go. In all the places where I have walked, with all the children of Israel, speak I the word with any of the tribes of Israel, whom I commanded to feed my people in Israel, saying, Why build me not me and now? He said, I've never, I've never said it to anybody. I've never told anybody that you need to give me a house, you need to buy me a car, you need to, you know, treat me right, you know? I've never said it to anybody. You can think these thoughts. As I say, when thoughts are passing, if you don't waste them, they will escape. It was just a thought. He has not even done it. He, sir, please, are you, I don't know if you, if there's a philosophy I expected to see on your faces, if you understand what I'm saying. You are looking hungry. The, the truth is, if you, if, if you get what I'm saying, eh, I expected a response. Anyway, let's go and I trust God. Look what it says. Now, therefore, so shall thou say unto my servant David, thus say the Lord of hosts, I took thee from the sheep coat, from following the sheep, to be ruler over my people, over Israel. Look what it says. And I was with thee, with the servant thou wentest, and I have cut off all thy enemies out of thy sight. What a joy. May God cut off all your enemies. I know some of us don't have enemies, Sister Kenny doesn't have. I say, those of us that have it, can I hear you say, may the Lord cut off all your enemies? It says, and I have cut off all. Oh, all thy enemies out of thy sight, and I may be a great name. May God make you a great name. 
Can you read what he said next? Like unto the name of the great men that are in the earth. There great men in the earth. The fact give you a name among the great. Yeah. Right. It's such a thing called great. So, what man gave Jesus name? Out of all greatness. Because he did what man has never done before. He died and resurrected. Well. He died in faith, resurrected in faith. <laughs> there are names that are great. You should be interested. If you should be please keep my name. I don't know my name in the book of life. I want my name in the book of life. I'm one of the great people. Yes. Yes. Not everybody's name is great. Otherwise, it wouldn't be a promise. Mm-hmm. It wouldn't be worth it if it's just open. Everybody goes, because I'm born again. Nonsense. It's not true. There is such a thing called great name, like unto the name of the great men that are already in the earth. He does not want to die, not plan to be great at anything. I don't think that is right. I don't think you should, if they didn't give you a great thing, rename yourself. Mm. Put yourself among those that are just going to aspire first. I pray that tonight, the conversation of greatness will begin for you in Jesus' name. Yeah. And if it's already on for you, God will take, teach you the next step to take in Jesus' name. Yeah. What was it? You can see that What was it that introduced this great discussion? Just a thought. Just a thought. He has not done it, sir. So he has not done it. There is no short thing he will do it. If there's only pledging, I pledge one million. It is shame. The group was so excited. The group was so excited. The was so excited. I don't know if this is blessing somebody here. The Bible says, and God gave him a name that is above every other name, that at the name of Jesus, every name should bow. Are you aware that Abraham's name is one of the great names on earth? Yes, sir. It's not the spelling name. It's what follows the person. Yes, yes. We say David, David. Not all Davids are David. Too. Uh-huh. Not all Abraham are Abraham. Not even all Christians are Christians. Not all joy are joyful. So it's not all great are great. It's not about the name. But it's good to even put yourself along the line. God is willing to make men pronounce your name, no matter how difficult. I don't know if you get what I'm saying. Yes, I've never had more keys a day. We are pronouncing it correctly now. You will learn it. You will learn how to pronounce greatness. You will learn. You will learn. I'm telling you. Have you got for functions where somebody's trying to pronounce somebody's name wrongly? I say, I beg your pardon. I'm so sorry. The name. Some names are tough. Mahatma Gandhi. Then you will pronounce it well. There are names that are crucial. This is what I'm saying here. If you don't have an aspiration to have a good name, you are not in the line of greatness, sir. You should have it. The, the concept of a good name is better than riches, is for the great. You must treasure your name and make the power of your name go beyond you to becoming a legacy. Are you listening? That's why it should inform the quality of stuff you get involved with. Mm. He said, I just want to give God. He did not say it. If you really read that Bible properly, he did not say it. Just say, look at me, dwelling here. And God said, and God said, you want to give God, God to be further. It's just like he said, I see that you are yeah, driving this kind of car. And, uh, and, then, and, then, and then I say, I want to go make that. And then he said, I didn't say I want to drive I was just saying that look at what I'm driving and look at what you are driving. God took it for that, expanded it. And did not only expand, it started promising him things. I know what I wrote now. We go down to verse 9 now. Verse 9. Verse 9. He said, and I was with him that. He said, among the earth. Look at the next thing he said, verse 10. He said, verse 10, the next one. Moreover, I will appoint a place for my people in Israel. And I will plant them there just because he thought. He said, 
and play them there and leave them in the place of their own and move no more. Maybe that shall be so he had all these things in his mind. But a good intention brought it out. This is it because it took him, it was not just about David, he's talking about Israel here. Yes. <laughs> not so your generations benefit from your good thoughts. Mm. Your generations. Your generations. And I just wonder that sometimes you know some people just think that we're just playing, I just playing, I just play. Just imagine this man here. He said, Nigga shall be trying to wickedness and free them anymore as before time. He said, They shall move no more. They shall live in a place of their own. <laughs> before that time, we saw them not going in the place of their own. We saw them that they were moving up and down, though. But somebody's good thinking made God start to promise, promise things you know, like he was too happy. <laughs> the God of a great name. Yeah. The God of a great name. I want you to please take what I'm saying seriously. Is that okay, please? Yes, sir. That leads me to the second thing. So, of us in our journey with God, this is the second number one juice. Like I said, I would, I would still say what he asked me to say. But please listen. In our journey with God, it will seem to me that some of us um, don't understand how it works with God. And I want to try to share a little of that tonight. So, this David, for example, is an Old Testament story. Like in the New Testament concept, we relate to God by faith. Praise the Lord. We relate to God by what? By faith. In Galatians 3, verse 1, let's look at it. Galatians 3, 1. What does he say? Galatians chapter 3, verse 1. Look how he says. We're going to read to verse maybe 4, 3 or 4. Let's read. Everybody wants to go. Oh, foolish Galatians. Can you imagine meeting people? I'm going to look at them. I don't know. You guys are foolish. I want to see the depth of what's going on here. I mean, he's in prison, you know. What is saying? Who is the fool? It's like, if you're not a fool, you're in prison. Don't think the new Paul was from God so much like that then. He was just one guy in the town that yeah. used to do bad, bad things before and I stopped. And he was boldly calling them all foolish Galatians. I want you to please note it. Because inside this verse, you see why he called them fools. And the Bible allowed the Holy Ghost, I mean, the Holy Ghost allowed them right inside the Bible. So I want you to watch out. Please, when you read the Bible in this church, read it like a Christian. Read it like a virtuous member. Okay. Don't read it like a thief. Uh, uh, mm, read it with some brain. All right, let's go on. So it says, All foolish Galatians, who has been, you know, who has judged you that you should not obey, eh? That is what? Obey the truth. Before whose eyes Jesus Christ have been evidently set for crucified among you, he's asking a question. Let's go on. This only would I learn of you. Receive ye the Spirit by the works of the law or by the hearing of the faith. So he's saying that the thing you have received, which is of the Holy Ghost, did you receive by the hearing of the law or by the hearing of faith? Are you getting what I'm saying here? Now look at what it says. Are you so foolish? Again, no. So this is the crux of his concern. Are you making some sense? Are you so foolish? Having begun in the spirit, are you now made perfect by the flesh? This is what I'm going to. The foolishness of the saints is revealed when it starts from the spirit and wants to perfect it in the flesh. What does this mean? If you trusted God for a relationship. And by faith, God gave you a relationship. The scripture is asking, are you foolish to think that that relationship will be perfected by the flesh? You trusted God. You started in faith. You don't want to perfect it in the flesh. Flesh meaning carnality or unbelief. Let me make some examples. You went on started in faith for a business, you got a business, and then maybe along the line you started to run low on cash. And you know that God gave you permission to start. You now got in the middle and start to feel like I see I need to get the spirit or more. And did you start in the flesh or you started in the spirit? Okay, you started a relationship with a guy. The relationship is taking tick tocking, tick tocking, tick tocking. You know what I mean by that? It's moving on. Then you notice that the guy is now misbehaving of some sort. 
and then you now want to use sex to perfect it. She says, I don't lose him. But it was prayer that brought him home, but you want to use sex to perfect it. You are a Galatian. You are not in the Galatian, you are in the category of foolish Galatian. Are you so foolish that you get that job by the spirit of God? Now you are using hard work to keep it. Right? Like this is your category. You get this place by faith. You are now using calamity to keep it. You get a child by faith. You want to use calamity to keep it. That's Galash. I say, are you now made perfect by the flesh? Can the flesh perfect what the spirit started? Uh. And your desperation perfect what the Holy Ghost started. Your Christian journey should consider this conversation. That except it is not God that started it. That's why God said, Look, if I start, I finish. He's called Alpha and Omega. I say to you that if your finances, for example, starts by faith, trust God by faith. <laughs> your son, your children, you started by faith. You don't have to want to use uh, when you go and see, it's not all this. You have to take them to, to American British schools. They, they don't come to church again. There's no, you, are, you no longer introduce the faith that started it. The spirit that started it. It says that having begun. So the question is, what do you start in the spirit? Your marriage, your business, your family, your life, your health. You've been born in the spirit. Why are you changing name? Why are you doing somewhere else? You didn't hear his voice tonight as God's voice at all. He said, Why are you going somewhere else? Did you start by the spirit? Then let the spirit sustain it. Go yes, to God. We start virtues by the spirit. We must stay in the spirit to sustain us. If you go to the flesh, you are not just a fool. You are, you, are, you are mimicking foolishness. Mm. And that's very dangerous. That was the bone of contention that Paul had with the Galatians. That we started this relationship now by faith. Why do you want to use sex to pay? say, no, she has to get pregnant for me? Where did you come from? Where is your pastor? It might be a relationship. It might be a job. You started a high on a high note with God. Somewhere along the line, you started getting desperate. As, as I'm talking now, I believe that someone should remember a story in Matthew 14. The story is the story of Peter. He started walking on water. Do you remember the story? Verse 28. He started walking on water, Matthew 14, 28. He started walking on water by faith. And Peter answered him and said, Lord, if it be done, if it be thou, bid me come unto thee on the water. Verse 29. And he said, come. And when Peter was come down out of the ship, he walked on the water to go to Jesus. He started walking on that water. He started in the spirit. Yes. yes. He started in the spirit. He was walking on water. That's why I look at some people. You know some, some sisters, they now cut the brother. These are little out of this. Let's be practical. And I'm like, they, they literally convinced the guy not to go to church again. Go and hustle your hustle. You know you are an Uber driver. It's not inside church. That service time, you can catch some 5K. I see that service time, police cannot arrest you. Or something cannot happen as well. No sense thinking. That's what I'm saying. You started the, the revelation of that business came to you in church. Now, we can't see you in church again. Because your name is Desperado. You believe that your desperation will make God bless you more. Mm-hmm. Was it desperation that made God start with you in our business? Mm-hmm. You get what I'm saying, yeah. I'm So I've shared with you two other more gist tonight. It's time to go to the main gist. Are you ready for this? Now? Yes, sir. On that note, I want to let you know that the critical factor in consistency of this other more gist is faith. God wants our faith to be intact. Look. Let me tell you something. If you get that thing without faith, God is not pleased. If you get that thing without faith, so you got it. That's to let you know that getting it is not the bigger thing for God. Is that he was involved. He was involved. 
if you get a child from Orumila, you got a child. But you think God is glorified by that? No. So your faith must always be intact. Glory to God. So I'm excited in my day, in my spirit. Faith must always be intact. Look, I was sharing the other day, I was just laughing at myself. I have committed my money to businesses that did not fly. You know what I mean by that? They didn't, they didn't, they didn't even flap their wings. From the ground, they stayed on the ground. <laughs> How can you commit $10,000 to a mortar with another 1.2 million to me? The same person. And you collected both, and I've not seen one cobalt to do from the money. Do you know what I'm talking about? And painfully enough, I borrowed the money to pay to invest in that business. So I, I know what it feels like. But you know what's funny? I, I understand what it means to hold on. Hallelujah. Look, if you, if you were held on to the business and it failed, you will collapse with the business. Do you get what I just said? Tell me, open Babylon Saloon. If this Babylon Saloon doesn't prosper, you will die. It's, that is wrong thinking. Your faith is anchored on the God that provided for that business salon and you are as well. You start a relationship, it's not going very well. You now start to use kaku kaku, kaku kaku, kaku kaku to sustain what God gave you. Then you say that well, you are incompatible. I want you to be incompatible. I like money more. You see, <clears throat> you have to take correction tonight. Are you listening to what I'm saying here? I pray that you will not forget when it is well with you. Amen. I'm investing on. Yes, Don't think I'm just kind to be teaching all these things. So I can know them and keep quiet. Mm. So what I'm saying to you tonight is that when you start in the spirit, stay in the spirit. Yes, no matter what it looks like, stay there. There's no way God will move to your lane in carnality to perfect what He started in the spirit. Ah. He won't. You started the relationship by God. You now want to sustain in sex and intimacy. You see, if I pay more attention to you, you pay more attention to you. Was it you that brought him? Was it you that brought him? Was it you that started the business? Was it a good dream? So in the journey of working with God, you must be stable. Can you listen to what I'm saying here? You must be stable. Set yourself up to be stable. What the hell do you get here should not leave you alone because you are brought in here? If humility brought in, you're going to stay with humility, you know you are going higher. Don't miss the point that thinking that because you started a relationship is beauty that brought it. Beauty fades like flower. Yes, you, will, you will look at the flower, you will not believe it's the flower that you once liked. Yes. So the point I'm making to you tonight is it must be a journey of faith. Your faith must be there. And faith comes by hearing and hearing of, by the word of God. And you have a revelation of God's word, and as you journey, you are not just walking because it's working. You are walking because you are being led. Right. You are walking because something is informing your intelligence. It's like, I don't know if what I'm saying. Right. No, glory no. no, to God. Right. So you are walking. Don't, don't be impressed by external appearances and impressions. Don't be impressed. Don't be impressed. I tell you confidently, people of God. With the vision of some 7,000 and I see the congregation in front of me, I could be impressed or depressed. I could be. I could be impressed. This is work. Let's even look at anything, whether it is good or not. Not the money, not the people. The Jesus that told you to come on the water, you feel it like The moment it has come looking at Jesus, it started going down. It was not physics that kept him up. He was looking. He was looking. You still have reason to stop looking. You still have reason to stop looking. What's wrong with you? Can you perfect in the flesh what you started in the spirit? What you put your hand and am committing this thing to your hands? Then you're in the middle of the world and you're feeling this way. Then God comes down with you. He sent me to you tonight. You have to be the servant. Yes, sir. So, hold on. You came to make us in faith. Don't give up. Did you start in spirit? Stay in spirit. Stay in spirit. Yes, sir. The just is getting better. 
Praise of God. You must hold on to this understanding. Look solid, sir. Look solid, man. Do you believe in God? You started with God in your faith. I see the Holy Spirit coming to my life. And he came. You started with God. Why do you not think the situation will make God get involved? Why? 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 I ask you, why? Now, on this, let's move on. In the conversation of faith, we must understand that faith only works by love. Yes, sir. Can I hear again a man I will forever admire? And I have my reasons, known and unknown. If I work in a heaven, you know, the names you hear among the greats. Mm. <laughs> the names you hear, those names are not ordinary. They are not ordinary. In a heaven, a man I so much admire <coughs> as the principle of the thumb. Every time he says that he engages his feet, and he's not getting the result he desires. Is that listening? Yeah. He says he has one more place to check his love work. Mm -hmm. Anytime you use faith, because faith always works. So if your faith is not working, check your love life. Mm -hmm. Yes, very true. In Galatians chapter six, verse I mean chapter five, verse six. Is it five six or six five now? Please have me double check that. It should be five six or is it six five? It should be six five. Check. Okay, God. It's five six. When Jesus Christ made a circumcision availeth anything, nor circumcision, but what? If it is Jesus Christ too. Mm. I get what I'm saying. If it is Jesus so all circumcision knows that it doesn't matter. But it what? But faith. Which, which works by law. If your faith doesn't work by love, or there's no love in your faith, I almost can guarantee you, you will have a shipwreck. Mm -hmm. Love it. If you look like God was not there. Mm -hmm. So the love work is critical to your faith work. The love. And by love, I mean, you know, I've told you before, love is registered by some simple things. Who can remind me? I've shared this before. Forgiving, giving, and sacrifice. Love carries these three emblems. If you want to know his love, say the again. Say what? Forgiving, forgiving. Let's start with giving. Giving, forgiving, and sacrifice. Once you just check it, if your faith is not clicking, check those three pillars. Are you giving? Are you forgiving? Or are you sacrificing? Are the three things. That's how to express love. I teach this as one who was ordered to teach it tonight. This is not common teaching on pulpit. In so, yes, sir. so it is in giving, it is in forgiving, and it is in sacrifice. What do you need to give? Your faith without generosity is not yet clear. Who are you holding non forgiveness? That really hurts you. That you don't want to let go. That you want God to do your own. And where is the sacrifice supposed to come? Maybe the problem has a greater sacrifice than what you are giving. Mm. Somebody is contending with you in a business or a relationship or something. But that person's sacrifice is greater than your own. Mm. Outweigh you. But you are in faith. And the person sacrificing, but you are not ready to sacrifice. And you are saying, Lord, do it for me. Or God, you won't get it. Not because faith is not good, it's because that person has a greater sacrifice than you. Somebody is trying to be take the position or the position you are in, and he's killing blood, settling your gas, doing everything. You are just there, not praying, not doing anything to, so to say, counter the attack or the position of that person. And I say, How did you get it? But I'm a Christian. If the sacrifice is greater than your own, she will get it. Yes, because the realm of the spirit honors sacrifices. Yes, it's altar to altar as it were. If the altar has a greater blood, this you will lose it. It's not, it's not deep. You will lose it. And God will not be too bad. 
I can show you a story in scriptures in 2 Kings chapter 3 that the children of Israel were supposed to fight the Midianites and that the king killed his own first son. The Bible says that, that the that the, how did people do? Said that the, the hand of the Lord resisted the Israelites. Do you know that if God has already prophesied the will be then the sacrifice of the first son made God say, ah, I can't touch this thing. Laws of the spirit are not so complex, but if we pay them, they will see, see the simplicity. God, God told them, put the north of the light shot. You will not see when you will not see when you will win this battle. At the end of the story, do you, you know that story? Is this it? Yes. And the end of the Lord was king to the can't read it up. Second Kings 13, okay, 13 3. The end of the Lord was king. No, is it this one? Is it this one? Let's go on. Let me see. And into it's not this one, it's chapter 3. Yes, try chapter 3. Praise the Lord. I'm, I'm, I think it's chapter 3. Go to chapter 3. So what's the huh? And Elisha said unto the king of Israel, What have I to do? Go, 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 go against Moab. It's not Midian, no Moab. And Elisha said, As the Lord did, not bring now, you shall continue, continue. And he said, Thus said the Lord, For thus said, You shall not see women, you shall not see women, aha. Uh -huh. And your beast, I have gone, and if this is what a light thing in the sight of the Lord. He will deliver the Moab. Say, hey, 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 he said, He will deliver the, the Moabite also into your hand. Shall we share? Let's go. Let's go. Go on. And you shall smite every first city and every. So you see them, you will do everything well, and shall fell every good tree, and stop all wells of water, and my every good piece of land with stones. Read on, please. Let's go on. Let's be faster, please. Then he took his daughter. So, no, okay, we have jumped down there. Uh -huh. So, the, no, let's read it. You, you don't carry me richer. So, let's just read 20 to 27. So that people can appreciate what is going on. And it came to pass in the morning when the meat offering was offered. We're going to go on 21. Uh -huh. And when all the Moabites heard that the kings were come up to fight against them, they gathered up and they were able to put on an armor and upward and stood in the border. Uh -huh. And they rose up early in the morning and the sun shone upon the water. And the Moabites saw the water on the other side as red as blood. And they said, This is blood. The kings are surely slain, and they are smitten one another. Now, therefore, Moab to this fire. And when they came to the camp of Israel, the Israelites rose up and smote the old Moabites, so that they fled before them. But they went stop smiting the Moabites, even in their country. They were chasing because of they were chasing them, kicking the Moabites. Look at what it says, though. Go on. And they beat down the cities and on every good piece of land, cast every man in stone and killed it. And they stopped all the words of water, like the prophet said, right? And fell all the good trees. Only in Karasir that left all the stones um, there. How did the slingers went about and smote it? Look at what's going on. And when the king of Moab saw that the battle was too short for him, he took with him 700 men that drew swords to break through even unto the king of Edom, but they could not. Then he took his head, the sword that should have lain in his head, and opened it a bunch of him upon the wall. And there was great indignation against the Israel. And they departed from him and returned to their own land. Oh, yes. Every day, does not forget sacrifices, sir. Even from a non believer. Even from a non believer, I said. So you will say to yourself that, ah, no, 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 no. Now, please, are you with me tonight? Yes. So we need to understand the power of what we are doing. I know you speak in tongues, I know you are giving. But if you don't want to sacrifice, either in prayer or in extended giving, you will, you will lose it. Or in fasting sometimes. That same thing that was just with passing by like a sheep. If you want it enough, sacrifice it enough. And when it comes to you, you are better for it. This guy was too desperate. Why did he, how did he know that if he kills his person, he will be He knew that it's a spiritual conversation. It's not a strategy. It's not a strategy. It's a spiritual conversation. Will you know when to switch in Jesus? So I will tell you, you don't want to give any bloody sacrifice. You are doing shekel, 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 shekel. You think you need bloody sacrifice. May not be hard for you. Do you want to move for someone to carry his adult son and slay? Huh? That we are supposed to live in his bed. That we do not take the last children. The next generation. 
He's a slave sister. We say God should let it go. We took us in Mark time. No, if you don't know these things, you think that it's not faithful. I'm showing you the the other way principles that make faith work. If I'm shot with big chest, if you don't understand these principles, you'll come up with big shame. So you have a boss who is serious. Who is determined to do something. And you are sleeping. He said, Oh God, just do it for me. 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 When God looks at the sacrifice of this man, he says, Wake up and pray. Those against you are strong. I remember some two years ago, was it three years ago? I, I did not eat again. Food. It was not because I lost appetite. Though. I determined that food will not go through this mouth easily anymore. Mm. Ah! I, I swallowed them. I know what I'm saying, though. Mm. When if you stand, you will see it will like the cloud in your room will be black. Mm. Mm. So if I'm not as serious, I don't think some people is dying. Like chicken. Mm. You say, okay, what happened? Nothing. What happened? You did not do something. So I'm speaking about faith that works by law. Are you getting blessed here today? Yes, I just feel like it's useful to mention here that the first expression of love is joy. Glory to God. Thank you for that. In Galatians, this is Galatians 5. Don't leave it to go down to verse 19. If you have a good Bible, okay, um, 22, do 21 or 22. Yeah. Uh-huh. Look at this. Is. If you have NIV or NKGV, please check it. I want to show you something. See what it says. For, but, 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 so, okay, aha, uh-huh. very good. Ah, uh, you have NIV. What I want to show you is very simple. Okay. okay. Just leave it. Whatever. What I wanted to show you, let me tell you the rendering of what I want to show you. It's still there, but you just have to understand. Please, are you listening? So the Bible says that the fruit of so in 19, it tells us the fruit of the flesh, you know, and envy, jealousy, can you call, all those things, you know, that's that. So, but it now says, but the fruit of the spirit is love. Now, in the rendering that I want to show you, it's actually a column in front. Do you get? Why I'm saying so is that it is wrong English in a sense. Show me. No, I don't have it there. No, don't worry, don't worry. I can't remember which of the translations it is. Go back to your original stuff. There's one that reads love. And it's still okay. You don't even have it. Just as I said, it's still there. I want to see that. How many things did he mention here? Love, joy, peace, long suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, patience, income. The right English should be the fruit of the spirit are love, joy. Do you understand? Do you get what I'm trying to say? Yes, he said, is love. He didn't enter, he wrote in there, go back, he said, with fruit, not with fruits. So you need to understand that I was talking about one thing. The fruit of the spirit is not love, joy. The fruit of the spirit is love. He now expresses how love finds itself as joy, peace, long suffering, gentleness, goodness. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yeah. So, what it means is that you see, <laughs> if you're not walking in love, you don't have the fruit of the spirit. Just very, just agree. And the first expression of love is joy. Hallelujah. What am I particular about this? I'll show you. Finally, go to John chapter 1, verse 11 and 12. 
I'll be back classic club Chelsea, but let's see if I'm uh, there's someone who should get ready, go to jail. You have a fight classic here. Yeah. He said, but the fruit of the spirit of uh uh -huh. the work which is present within accomplish is love. But it doesn't matter, it's still it's still the same thing, it's love. I just wanted to share that. Let's go. Can we go to the last scripture now? Draw chapter one. Draw one. Draw one. But if you find that reference, that's reference, it shows it shows column, and then now it expresses there. But it's okay, no problem. So let's go to draw one, verse eleven and twelve. How do you see the power of why joy must not finish in your life? Your productivity is tied to your joy. Look at this is. Please share your idea now. Right, by boy. Let's read it together. One, two, go. Be ye ashamed, O ye of Zion. How, O ye wine dressers, for the wheat and for the barley, because the harvest of the field is perished. Please listen to this. He said, "It's harvest time. That is, every harvest is perished." What are we talking about? Next line. Next line. The vine is dried up and fig tree languishes. The pomegranate tree, the palm tree also, the apple tree, and the apple. Even all the trees of the field are withered. Hold on. Why? Because joy is withered away from the sons of men. No joy, no fruitfulness. Apple tree will not grow because you are not joyful. Please, I want you to know I do not write Bible. Can you tie my life to joy? Yes. There is an earth on your inside that the earth on the outside responds to. <laughs> the form of mind you take eh, is what you see outside. No joy inside, no productivity outside. Because if you have that, I make you happy. So you must have had that joy before the outside shows up. And yeah. You are waiting to see things before you happy. You have to be happy to see things. It is joy that becomes the key to creating harvest for you in the real world. So your faith works by love. But the first expression of love is joy. If you are in faith, you will be joyful. When you ask me what's going on, you say, ah, I'm just trusting God. You are not, you are not here. Mm -hmm. You are feeling like you are touching. Yes. Ah. How do you see the end of your faith, the salvation of your soul? It's like I think you have captured it already. <laughs> Someone is trusting God for her wedding day. You have already walked the eye, worn and come back. I told you that before I got to UK, I got into UK. Yes, sir. Uh, uh, God is my witness. The first day I got to UK, I was asking, I've been there before. I've never been there before. It was my first time. But I've been there before. Do you know what I'm talking about? Yes. Before I got married, I was married. I was married. I've already seen my old age in marriage. Are you getting what I'm saying here? Yes, Joy is crucial for your life. You can't afford to. You see, this joy matter is not personal. It's not just when I feel like. No, it's the way of the Christian. It's the way of fruitfulness. Can you tell me, pomegranate tree, palm tree, apple tree? In fact, in our words, is it all the trees of the field? I'm not producing because joy has withered out. I don't know if the fertilizer is not working. You know something? Or the soil is bad. Because joy, we are joy not with that. And what makes you lose joy with that? Bad news, wrong company, offense, delayed expectations, low self esteem, undue pressure on yourself, and unreasonable expectations on yourself. Comparison. Can we do away with these things today? As a ministry, can we do away with them? As individuals, can we do away with them? Yes, sir. That our joy will never wither. Yeah. Could you trace apple fruitfulness 
how could you trace that apple should be fruitful simply because of joy? How? How do you connect joy to fruitfulness? It's people, but you understand what I'm saying at all? That's why I know from today. Your joy will no longer wither in Jesus' name. I know from tonight, someone's harvest will no longer delay in the name of Jesus. From tonight, I know somebody who will die in the spirit will not end in the flesh in the name of Jesus. I pray for you from my heart of hearts that God will thoughts you begin to cross your mind. That God will give you rest round about. Deliver you from all your enemies. Satisfy you with plenty in the land of the living. In the name of the Lord Jesus. I pray that you will not start in the spirit and be waiting in the flesh to be perfect. I pray that your spiritual work as your spirit, spirit you will stay in the spirit in the name of Jesus. I pray that your love work with God will not be compromised. I pray that the sacrifices of your best will not be better than yours. I pray that you understand that the future will become clearer. You know what to do from now in the name of Jesus. When you start to do these things, you will get the result. The life will benefit from it in the name of Jesus. This ministry will benefit from it in the name of Jesus. The generators will benefit from it in the name of Jesus. I pray that as you join in and out of the Christian, no one's opposition against you will become your glory in the name of Jesus. As you walk on water, you keep walking on water. As you ride in high places, you keep riding in high places. You have been lift up the banner of your destiny. Your name shall be placed among the great. God will convey a name to you that only Him will call you in the name of Jesus. God will show you a name that He bears that only He will call Him in the name of Jesus. I pray that you will be placed among the name of the great in this earth in the name of Jesus. I pray that your passion for growth and greatness will not uh, will be withered in the name of Jesus. I pray that the testimony of virtues will never wither as well in the name of Jesus. I pray that the God of the heavens and this will not be lifted up as well in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father, because you exalt me, Lord. I promise to return all the glory to you, Father, Father. In the name, not only in the book of life, but among the great of this afternoon. Thank you, Holy Spirit of God. We give you all the praise and the glory. Thank God, sister, for once and just bless and adore His holy name and just thank you, Father. We give you all the praise and the glory. Take the praise, Lord. In Jesus' precious name, we pray. Hallelujah. Are you blessed tonight? Let's give a little round of applause. Take your hands. If you don't mind, let's sanctify the ceremonies powerfully and declare them. I want you to evoke better things in your life. Tonight's communion is a communion of better things. Better promises. Amen. Whatever was good before can be better. Amen. I want us to take faith tonight in this teaching. That as we eat and drink of this blood, you speak better things. You speak better things. You see better things. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Let's pray the Holy Ghost. Begin to prophesy where you are. Let's receive grace tonight to fellowship in the Holy Ghost. Our communion is not ordinary. Speak better things. You may have had good things before, but it's time for better things. It's time for better things. It's time for better relationships, better opportunities, better days, better hearts. Hasson de Kleparatabaga Shorebozaza. Madrabe Sote Kipari de Batabaga de Baglobo Gosos de Moshe. Ekutabalia Nabreke Soso de Bashi de Bodo de Bodo de Bodo de Batabia. Oh, Briso Raga de Braga de Baga 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 Let's 
Jesus' name we pray. Amen. If you've been blessed tonight, let's give the Lord a look. Let's pack it our tithes and our giving at this instance. We are giving to God by faith. Hallelujah. Let's cast our tithes. If you are cast your tithes tonight, please be upstanding by the grace of God. God bless you. The Lord bless you. The Lord increase you as well. I want to ask you to please be upset and let's pray over our tight and our giving at this instance that the Lord will be glorified. Oh, Father, we thank you. Oh, Spirit of God, we bless you. We love you, Lord Jesus. We bless you, Holy Spirit. Any other person? Father, we thank you. Father, Lord, can you just lift up your tight and let's just speak a word over it and just speak a word that it's not living your life, it's going into your future to secure a harvest. Your generosity to God provides a harvest to you. Let me assure you that you can't give to, we are not collecting this money for ourselves, it's to his kingdom, it's for his house. He knows what you are doing, he knows what to give you, and he wants you to bring it to his house. Father, we thank you for this opportunity. I bless everyone standing here today to cast their tithe. I demand, Lord, that the blessedness of tithing will be their portion in Jesus' name. Amen. I ask, Holy Spirit of God, that your name will be glorified in their lives. Amen. And that we will truly testify that the blessedness of giving is greater than the blessedness of receiving. Amen. Let your name be glorified. Amen. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Please do the transfers. Your giving an act of generosity does not go unnoticed to God. It does not go unnoticed. God knows you could use the money to buy a new chain. That when you give him, it's a token of what he has given you. I want you to please don't feel giving to God is a burden. Truth is that anything you practice more, you become better at it. Practice generosity. Let us be preaching hard to raise an offering. The Lord is our portion in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, folks, I need to let you know if you remember, I told us once that a guest minister was going to be joining us on November 26th. I don't know if you remember from Brazil. One came from Brazil earlier in November when I came back. You remember? Yeah. Yeah. Then I was remember the third or something. And then this man of God that I told you about is in town and is coming to join us on Sunday. <laughs> now let me tell you something. He's a very dear friend. And I know the anointing of God upon his life. Two things. Number one, he has a strong hand of the prophetic and the miraculous. Number two, he has grace for wealth. And number three, he has power for signs and wonders. That's a very rare combination. And I don't say that casually about people. All right? If I don't have to talk, I don't have to talk. But I want to heighten your expectations. Come expectance. Do you hear what I just said? Come expectance. What I know about this man is that he's not just talking. If he tells you <laughs> words, take them seriously. Is that okay, please? He's a friend and someone I respect so much. And there's nothing wrong in knowing that God allows us to experience the graces of other people that are okay. Is that okay, please? I want us to show that we are expecting someone. He's a short notice, I know. 
but we can do something significant yes, in our hall. Yes, sir. We can do something yes, significant. If flyers will come out tonight for something, come and expect that. Yes, come and when you are coming tonight, come with a friend. Compel them to come this Sunday. Praise the Lord. Amen. I'm confident somebody will not live without a miracle that day. That is, you will get your miracle directly Amen. in the name of Jesus Christ. He pastors a very brilliant church in um, um, Brazil, Sao Paulo. Very lovely man. Very, very, you know, I don't want to overhype him, but trust me, he's, um, he's a great man. I want you to come expectant. Expectant. Plan to sow a seed. Commercial to expectation. I will package it together and give it to him. Nariyami, please, let's do as such. I don't want us to struggle. Every program is a program. I told them to do a design that speaks to it in concept of wealth and finishing strong or joyfulness. I want us to please give it the best. It's some four or five days from now and he's really looking forward to being with us. I preached a bit, a short charge in his church. He heard me preaching somewhere. I said, please, can you come to my church tomorrow? Because I was traveling the next day back to Brasilia, the capital of Brazil. I couldn't stay. So I had to catch a plane in the morning. Do you understand? He said, please, even if it is just charge my people. And he put me beside a very powerful man of God, Bishop, um, Bishop, um, what's her name now? I forgot her name now. A very powerful man that brought a brief child. And trust me, excellent ministry. Very nice. So I want us to please enlarge our hearts. Invite people, just oh, try. You know, I know, you know, you know, you know, the pastor. For me, that's all is good. Now, there may be manifestations of his giftings that I, I, I have not taught you in. Just flow and watch my face. Now, they hear me so, yes, sir. just watch me. If there's anything, I'll come on my pulpit, I'll correct it in case it goes off course. Get used to that. Sometimes, some ministers do things that we don't accept here. I'm in charge, I'll correct my house, I'll correct the doctrine. And I don't bring him out of sympathy, I brought him because I feel. I've been expecting him, and I think it's okay. So please, programs, let's make it count. Let's make all our friends come in, all our loved ones have been away. The Lord will bless us in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, one more thing I need to say is that watch night service is coming up, and I told us, thank you there. 24th is the day we're putting our gifts together. That's upper Sunday. We're bringing all our gifts, 24th. If you bought anything, you bought a flower vase, you bought a flower vase for the puppies, you bought a thing, even if it's a flower, you bought for church, even if it's paper, I'm not, but I just don't want it to be um, direct money, except you insist. And I pray that it is something that we will receive too. Mm -hmm. But the way it came to my heart is buy something for the church. Please, you get what I'm saying? Yes, that's, that's the way the Lord led me on it. Buy something for the church. Buy something for the church. 24th is the date that we're receiving it. And of course, next day, I also want to encourage you people Trust God for your finances and your health. If it is to do a job, I do a job. I'm collecting in January. Do you understand? Uh, so I'm just trying to share with you be smart, be constant. See, here, uh, there's no amount you can earn that will make you stop earning. The rich still do money to make money. Uh, one hundred ten thousand dollars. One of the richest men in the world. Nearly jailed a daughter of Zion to death. For making a mistake of trying to claim ten thousand dollars from his finance, people who really know these things know that these things are real. Don't be small-minded thinking that we are trying to collect from you. Nobody's trying. That's why you will not sacrifice now for the next year. You'll be wondering that when they want to collect their money, this was sweet. Really, continue. So we are here together. Tell me the truth. It's by faith. It's not the giving that makes everything stop. It's the giving that plugs you from the world. Uh -huh. I pray that the Lord will honor these things I'm teaching you yeah. and you know, give you testimonies to show for it. Yeah. I have done my job tonight. Let's take our offerings before we go. Father, we thank you for the opportunity to give our offerings. We declare them blessed in Jesus' name. Yeah. We do your transfers. God bless you mightily in Jesus' name. Yeah. Um, please, get an attendance of those online. Let's see them. Amen. And, um, Jesus is Lord.
Alaka City Day today. Do your transfers, make them good, credit them to Virtuous Christian Center. Then God be glorified. All right, at this point, I want us to rise on our feet as we close this service powerfully. I hope you guys listen to the teaching again. If you notice, I brought three conversations into this teaching. And I told you it was going to happen. And we just did that. And I hope you can go back and refresh on the conversation. Don't forget, whatever you start in the spirit, don't perfect it in the flesh. If you started trusting God, don't start getting desperate on God. Stay in faith. Let him who began a good work in you be faithful to complete it. Don't go into sex, premarital sex, I mean, just because you want to keep a bubble. Ah, what is it? Who God open the door? I promise you, your efforts that is not with God will close the door. So calm down, all right? Let God be glorified. Act in faith. Don't forget what I told you. One of the ways by which your faith will work is your love work. All right? You said so, right? Yes, Don't forget that. And one of the evidence of your love work is your joy work. Your what? Your joy work. May Jesus be glorified. Uh, and let's say the Korean church together, grace and peace. Grace and peace is multiplied unto us through the name of God our Father and of Jesus Christ our Lord. Say to your neighbor, grace and peace. Grace and peace is multiplied unto you through the name of God your Father and of Jesus Christ your Lord. Say to upon yourself, Father, please. Amen. Let me ask you, neighbor, what quality of thoughts will pass your mind this week? <laughs> say, tell the person, say, make them quality of thoughts. <laughs> or better, make them quality thoughts <laughs> that will make God bless your generation. <laughs> tell them, Pastor loves you. <laughs> Very sincerely. May <laughs> the best of heaven be yours. <laughs> Somebody rejoice.